The idea of the front is what are those uh, battles that we will need to deal with. We ask every participant to be as clear as possible in explaining their point, in explaining why we should care about the project they were bringing here. So it be able to explain in the most simple possible terms without losing the richness, the complexity of the initial problem. Our intention by bringing these uh, 55 teams selected uh, was showing uh, solutions that some offices are doing, are responding with under constraint, under this economic constraint, uh, to solve current problems, but also considering what is going to happen in the future. So we wanted to speak to many different people in the public, the general public, and definitely broaden the discussion beyond just other architects too. So, you know, whether that be from decision makers, academics, writers, to um, children, uh, to the general public involved in all sorts of different um, kind of disciplines or professions in life, because that's what architecture is about, essentially. You know, architecture is the background, the setting for our lives, for our everyday lives, and everyone should be able to engage in the conversation with that. So we is, have essentially constructed this uh, map of the world at a scale of one to one billion. And you essentially look through a gold survey stake and see 800 images flash in front of your eyes in 800, across 800 years of history in 800 seconds. And essentially it tells the story of how extraction is not just about mining and resources, it's a story of colonization. Um, we're proposing that Canada has become a global resource empire. So we want visitors to experience a space, the built space. Um, this allows people from different backgrounds uh, to enter the project and everybody can uh, read uh, depending on or read different layers of the project depending on what they know. Um, I think really built space uh, to use this for an exhibition, an architecture ex exhibition uh, is quite intuitive somehow and we wanted to uh, yeah, go beyond the border of what has been done in this area with this project. When you design through time, you don't make a judgment about your subject. So you don't have a socioeconomic class or a geographic location, or whether it's urban or rural or demographic. You really ask a basic question, what the essence of how it is to live in a place for a certain moment might be. One of the things that we're very happy is that all of the architects, one way or another, worked with the everyday and brought architecture to the everyday. No one did uh, a fancy building, nobody did a museum, but instead dealt with what is the everyday life in the post-industrial city and how can architecture contribute to it. In the case of the Nordic countries, which are uh, developed countries that are actually an example for the rest of the world, you will think that they don't have any questions to solve them. They have this fantastic education system, uh, very democratic social model, but actually they are facing challenges. We didn't make any distinction uh, between countries. And that was very interesting because you see that there is a constant among them in very architectural terms, that it is very obvious, the materials, the wood, the light, the special qualities that are very common to these countries. But there is another constant, and that these architects take their profession with a very big responsibility and to be at the service. They, in this unconscious level, they know that they have to be part of it to construct a, a better society. So what we do uh, is make alternative plans uh, that are neither completely preservationist and also do not propose to build huge hotels on the site, but uh, open up different opportunities to be uh, for sustainable projects, sustainable projects both uh, in terms of nature and in terms of uh, economy. I would like a visitor to the Biennale to be able to put themselves in the shoes of others. Instead of just judging the object, understand the process, understand the constraint. If we do that as practitioners, as decision makers or as the public, we may have a better understanding of the complexity of the issue and also what we could expect and demand from architecture. Thank you.